Previously on Mighty Car Mods, we picked up a shagged Nissan 350Z Nugget, and we're not just getting it running again, we're giving it a complete makeover in just a couple of days. Our plan is to try and make it capable of doing some of the driving that you can do in Need for Speed Payback. Our long tube headers are now finished. We've also installed new seats, a steering wheel, brakes, roll bar, wheels, tyres, coilovers and test fitted our carbon fibre bonnet. Next up we're going to install our MAD NVIDIA exhaust which is a full stainless system, twin system for most of the way. Um, we don't know for sure whether it's going to fit our headers uh, and if it doesn't we're going to be making stuff. So from this point here where the cuts are all the way down is meant to just replace what was on the factory system already. But the PPE performance headers that we've got come out at what it looks like at a slightly different spot to where the factory ones do. So we're just going to start at the back, work our way forward, uh, and it'll either match up, which will be awesome, or it won't, which means we'll have to see what that difference is and then make some pipes, and that's it. So let's get to it. One of the good things about 350s is that many owners modify them, which creates a huge demand for mad aftermarket bits. It's worlds away from obscure Japanese mirrors or engine swapped minis that then require custom everything. The exhaust fits directly onto the factory rubbers. Considering how low this car is going to be, we're going to try and get it up as close to the floor pan as we possibly can. Alright, so the exhaust is on up to here, the headers are on up till there. Now, I'm having a truth. Yeah. Now we find out if this fits or whether our day just got nasty. Martin, let me, I got a crazy idea. Yeah. Let me check the reference picture. We spend a lot of time modifying unique cars that we've worked on like our Turbo EZ30 Liberty, LS1 Silvia, Barra Cresta or Honda powered Mini. So a lot of custom work and fabrication is required. In a case like this though, it's a real treat to be able to bolt on parts that actually fit. So incredibly, I don't know what should be incredibly, but the exhaust does fit. Fits. But quite often things don't fit when they say they're, they're gonna fit. And now, we put our mad anodized tips on. So fun when stuff just works like that, isn't it? For maximum street cred. So much fun. The good news is that our exhaust fits and was easier than expected. But the same thing can't be said for our headlights. No, it's a different car, a 350Z, and an R34 is a different car. Yeah, no, they're not the same thing. They are two totally different cars. They are not the same car. So as you can see, our headlight fitment is perfect. Oh, because wow. Because apparently a 34 and a 350Z is exactly the same car. And All as right. you can see, that is the same car. Because both Nissan. Because they're both Nissan. Do you want some more good news? I need some good news, Martin. What do you got? I just got a refund for mm. our ITBs that I ordered weeks ago that were supposed to be here two days ago. They just refunded in my account and said, sorry, can't, like, can't do it. No individual throttle bodies. No, and they take weeks to make as well from like any other company that makes them. Oh. So no ITVs, but I have an idea. Is your idea to go to eBay and buy the cheapest headlights that you can buy so that your car has headlights? Because that's what I'm doing right now. And don't hate on me when they like get here and they're all whatever they're gonna be because I'm just gonna get whatever fixes the problem before tomorrow. As long as they headlight. But my, my, my idea is to go and buy a hundred shot of NOS. Yes. Just wake it up. Just spray it in the intake, hit a button. Ah! Perfect. Keen? Keen? Perfect. Man, Keen. That sucks. That sucks so bad. Same car. Oh my God. Look, we'll just do an R34 front. That'll be easy. We'll take no time. That would actually look really there good. There you go. We'll just cable time right there. That would actually look better than it looks right now. You should keep these. After buying some headlights online, we're opening another package that we've bought sight unseen. This is a carbon fibre wing. And is it a performance modification or is it just for looks? We'll let you decide. Is it that way or the other way? I don't know, man. <laughs> Does anyone know? And by the time you tell us, it'll be too late. I think it's a good thing that we're not experts in these. One of us wants the wing and the other one doesn't. So we'll have to argue about that later. But one thing that we can agree on is that the small factory spoiler needs to go. With the factory spoiler gone, we can clean up the boot lid and now we're at the exciting part of test fitting our body kit. We're not actually putting it on for good yet uh, because it'll get painted separately at the body shop, but this is just a chance for us to make sure it's just actually going to fit. This is a custom made 
uh, fiberglass bumper, front and rear bumpers, and we've got side skirt as well, made by JSI Aero Parts, which is a dude from Sydney. He makes all this stuff, which is pretty cool. Young dude. And that. So we got this, we got a rear bar, plus side skirts. It's gonna look good. It's a successful test fit, so now we can move on to the next job, which is installing some aftermarket injectors. So we have some 750cc injectors, work with petrol or ethanol if we ever want to go down that route. So these can get smashed into there, and we have heaps more fuel. Injectors are an easy swap that future-proof our setup and mean we'll have great control over mixtures when it comes time to upgrade our ECU and tune the car. Next, it's time to throw in some adjustable camber arms up front. This is a simple bolt-in mod that allows you to pull the top of the tyre inwards towards the car to help with fitment and with grip. We're also going to install some adjustable rear arms. While the effect isn't as dramatic as the front, these will help keep the car drivable by getting the wheel alignment back to acceptable specs once the car has been lowered. With the adjustable camber arms installed on all four corners of the car, it's time to pick up some supplies and give this dirty Nissan a full service. So some headlights have arrived. Uh, I gotta be honest, I don't know exactly what these are going to look like, but the car has to be finished tonight. Like we are done. And this is all I could find that would actually arrive here today that maybe unlike the other lights we got will actually fit our car. But I don't know what's uh, I don't know what we're gonna find in here, Martin. As long as it fits though. As long as it fits, as long as they're not from a GTR. I think we're all right. Brand new, huh? There's, cool. a lot, there's a lot going on. There's heaps going on. I like the black though, that's cool. Yeah, the black might work. And... It fits. I think on a stock car, maybe not, but I think on something that's a bit more wild, I reckon it might work. It's going to work because it's all we have and we have no time. <laughs> Good. That was easy. All right. Done. You know what's next, Martin? What? I don't know. It's big and it's heavy. It might be the most exciting box in the entire universe, my friend. Well packaged. Is what's in this box going to make us laugh, Martin? Oh, mate. You need more than that. Yes! Oh, dude. Down our kit. That's awesome. Far out, right, that's so good. And what do we have in here? This is exciting. Uh, in here, I'm assuming everything that we need to install it? No, no, everything we need to install is in that box. Oh, what's in that box? What's in this box is our second bottle. Oh, we got NOS in stereo. Double bottle, man. That's awesome. How cool is that? So there it is, everybody. What? When your uh, ITBs don't arrive, the quickest way of getting the most amount of power possible, uh, other than I don't know why I mean like is NOS. I love turbos and stuff, but like there's just something about that, isn't there? Well, Martin, that is uh, as it's known as chemical supercharging. Chemical supercharging. Let's work out how to install it. Maybe we should go watch a Mighty Car Mods video. When you inject nitrous oxide into your intake, your car goes faster because it allows a denser charge of oxygen, creating a more powerful combustion. Oh, this is going to be so mad! You'll be able to see it through the back window as well, which is kind of cool. Double boss, bubble bottle setup. <laughs> the thing is, in Need for Speed, like, nitrous is like a signature thing. It is. It's like what you've got to do to chop every fall. I wonder what it is with car games and NOS. They love it, don't they? There's always a button for it, like the boost button. It's oh, we got to do that as well, man. we we got to have a button in there and you press that and then that just lets you chop the cops. So these have to Not be... Not on the real road, everyone. No. These have to be on an angle like... This has to be the highest time. part. So in the game, uh, one of the ideas is you've got to try and get away from the cops while you're doing your crazy missions and stuff. So realistically, you'd probably want to be able to reach the top of those bottles from when you're sitting in the seats. So Marty has had a pretty rad idea, which is actually mounting the bottles here onto the roll bar. There's lots of roll bar kits you can get that can attach the bottles to the roll bar. Um, and that means that when you're sitting here up the front, you can actually turn around, turn the bottles on, 
um, and then you've got your Mad Nos. There's some considerations with this as well. We can't be in the way of the harnesses, which we're not, because it's right centred. We'll put them next to each other. You can buy actual brackets that attach these for getting them in and out. And the other thing is, because the Nos bottle is in the same compartment as us, because it's not a sedan, you need vent down tubes. Yeah, yeah. And it, regardless of where we put the bottles, we have to run them anyway. So whether or not it's half a metre closer to you doesn't matter. Yeah. So I reckon that'll work. Bit tricky to get them in and out, but we won't need to get them in and out that often. It's just to fill them. Yeah. And then install it, put it in there, and it'll last a while, especially with two bottles. Uh, and it goes without saying as well that, like, this is totally illegal on the actual street yeah. to run, like, a connected nitrous system, in certainly Australia here is. where we are anyway. Um, so this is something that when the car's on the street, they'll have to be disconnected. That was just a disclaimer for mum and dad. So this is our nitrous system. This is the nozzle that's going to go into the intake that's actually going to spray the nitrous in there. We've got our different jets there. We're probably going to be uh, using a 100 shot. Up here we've got the solenoids. So this here is what's electronically controlled usually by a switch or by accelerator or by your ECU. There's a lot of different ways to do it. This is what controls the flow of the nitrous and everything else here is just the plumbing. So we have done a whole video on this before when we did nitrous on my Honda S2000. So that should make it a little bit easier doing the install today on the 350. The best thing about Nitrous is how easy it is to install and how little you need to do to your car in terms of modifications for the power increase you get. The worst thing is that it's temporary because the bottles run out before you can say chopped. Our double bottle setup will give us more hits of the go go gas and only requires a wire adapter and a bit of extra hose at the back of the car. After Swiss cheesing the factory intake pipe, we've decided to make a new one out of stainless steel to install the nitrous fogger into, as we no longer need the airflow meter because our Haltech Pro plug-in will be controlling the solenoids. It will make sure the nitrous is only triggered when the engine can handle it. So the front of the car is looking solid. That's a mad custom intake that you've done, Marty, and we didn't make that because we wrecked the factory one at all with drilling holes too big in it. Uh, so that's an awesome performance upgrade that we just did because we wanted to. Uh, we've dummied in the NOS bottles. This is not actually where they're going to sit, but we got these mad, we were talking about getting these like roll bar mounts and these ones here are from Aeroflow and these are awesome. This is not where they're gonna sit and the reason they're not gonna sit there in its final version of this car is because that is where the harnesses go. But by putting them here, it means that Marty, you can do all your plumbing and your whiz bangery. We can dummy them in. So I've run the NOS line up from the back of the car to the front. There'll be a little wire adapter that means we can use both bottles, which is mad. Um, and then the next thing is safety, which involves this uh, blow down tube which is this little fitting that goes on the side of the bottle because the bottles are in the same cabin space as us when we did the S2000, it was in the boot, so we mm -hmm. didn't need it. But in this particular car, we're in the same cabin space, we need this thing called a blowdown tube. What that means is, is if the pressure inside the bottles gets too high, I think it's around 3,000 PSI, normally you run your NOS system 900, 1,000, 1,100, something like that. So it's a lot of pressure. The pressure gets too high, there's a little valve in there that will blow. Then there's a bit of tube that we run off the side of this outside the car we drill a hole down there in the wheel well somewhere and it vents to outside the car it's a safety regulation for a lot of dragways you've got to do it and it's just a good safety thing to do awesome well man while you get stuck into that i'm going to go and get our replacement rear tires that man. will actually fit our wheels cool i'm installing some dash 8 panel mount fittings into the boot floor that i can then make custom hoses for if the bottle does let go it will blast the nitrous down out of the cabin which will be a lot less funny in a good way Meanwhile, I've picked up two new tyres that are a way better fit on our rear wheels. So the first set of tyres that we put on the rear did not fit that well. They were super stretchy. So now we've got a couple of 26535 Bridgestone Potenza RE003s. They fit the rim way better and is basically going to give us extra, extra tyre on the side here. I don't know how that's going to go when the car is actually lowered. We might have to roll the guard, which is going to be interesting on the other side because it looks like that guard is made out of bog but that is something we'll have to find out. The wheels are on and the tyres are looking heaps better. The nitrous system is getting finished up and we've installed oxygen sensors in the exhaust. Next up, we're removing some panels on the passenger side so I can remove the factory computer and swap it out for a plug and play aftermarket ECU. This will give us precise control over the car's performance, fueling, tune and nitrous delivery. Meanwhile, I've wired up the nitrous solenoids, tweaked the suspension setup, and rolled the guards. Now we can drop the car and see what it's gonna look like. It looks mad, but now we need to get the car actually moving. 
I'm connected to the car via USB so I can load in a base map that should for now be enough to start it. This is the moment of truth. Our 350Z is alive, a little smoky, but it is a Nissan and alive nonetheless. It's been a crazy couple of days and we're not finished yet, but we're stoked with how much we've got done in such a short amount of time. On the interior, we've got our roll cage, we've got our sport seats, we've got our steering wheel and harnesses. We put some mad new wheels on it, we've got coilovers, adjustable camber arms and importantly, new tyres. We've also upgraded the brakes and on this end, we've got our custom intake, long tube headers, a full exhaust, we've done the spark plugs, we've done the injectors and serviced everything. We've also got a new ECU in there to run the whole shebang and of course importantly we've got our nitrous system. Now sitting over there we still have our body kit and of course our carbon fibre bonnet and we've got our headlights but those things are not going on there yet because the car needs to go on the back of a truck and is probably not going to fit because it's so low now. Because today is not over, my friends. There is still a lot to do. Where to next, Marty? Uh, next up, it's going to a wheel alignment shop. And then after that, we are going to the dyno. So it's going to get tuned. And then after that, and to finish the day, it will go to the paint shop. And then, and then I think it's ready. Then it's ready. But it's going to be a very big day. So let's try and get this thing on a truck. Let's do it. Before the car goes anywhere, we have to get it onto the back of a tow truck. And then our first stop will be to get the suspension set up and a proper wheel alignment. With that all sorted out, it's back onto the truck and we're off to get our bottles filled with nitrous oxide. From there, it's over to the dyno at Haltech to get the car tuned and actually making power. Oh. Nailed it! Well, that's a mission to get onto the dyno with an extremely lowered car. Um, Man. I don't get it, but I don't have to get it. It looks cool. Do your dyno tuner a favour and just, if you can, raise it up, we get it on, it's easy to strap, we don't get all dirty. Mud tyres. But, these do look pretty hot when they're lowered. So we've got injectors in there, long tube headers, a nice flowing exhaust, uh, an intake, a few other bits and pieces like that. Yeah. So, Basically what we want to do is we want to spin it up, see what it makes, make sure you're happy with the tune in it. And then we do have our nice big blue bottles of NOS. That system, they're just finishing that off now. So it should work today. If it does, I'm hoping we can spray it and see what happens. All right. What do you uh, reckon? Big cube engine, bit of gas. Yep. It'll be, it will make power. And these things are pretty strong. Yep. So we should be able to make a pretty decent increase over factory power. The ECU is connected to the dyno software so we can monitor exactly what's going on with the car then it's the ever-important low-speed tuning, which we'll probably never use. I think it's time. I think it's time. I just did a run with some nitrous um, corrections made on the ignition timing and the fuel. Yep. Just before we put the bottle in, I just wanted to prove that all of the corrections are working mm -hmm. so that when we put the bottle in, we can just give it a pull and we know that all the safeties are there yep. to make sure that this doesn't throw all the rods out. So we have to plug this in. This is the first time it's got a charged bottle. So right. we're gonna plug it in, make sure there's no leaks and then Cross your let fingers. it rip. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Both the strength of my customised hoses and the strength of the engine are about to be tested. If either fails, there is going to be explosions. Scotty tests the system by feeding in a small amount of nitrous and straight away we see a bump in power. Next run, it's getting the full hit of giggle gas. Our car's made 211 kilowatts at the wheels, which is a huge power increase. From here, our 350 sent straight to the paint shop overnight. And by the morning when we drop off the lights and body kit, the car's already prepped and almost ready to get painted in the booth. It's been long days and even longer nights, but now we're so close. It has probably been the most like epic few days of working on a car 
that we've like ever done, don't you reckon, Marty? Like yeah. it's just, 100%. it's been, it's been crazy. But really, really happy with uh, what we did. And this was the cheapest 350Z for sale in Australia. Uh, and I think we've turned it into something that's really cool. It's gonna look so mad, dude. It's gonna look paint great. up. I'm so pumped. Well, I just want to get paint uh, on there. We'll find out. Uh, we'll find out next episode whether it all actually works or not. Next time on Mighty Car Mods, we reveal our finished 350Z and see if it is actually capable of doing some of the driving that you can do in Need for Speed Payback.